like you were saying um, just a minute ago about um, following the, the, the crumbs, the, the um, you know, following the signs that are given to you. When you live a life where you're just going from one clue to the next, and really you're connected, and that's where you're connected to source, or you can call it God, or you can call it the universe, or you can call it your own personal um, knowing. When you're really connected to that, and you, you know, you have the power of attraction, the law of attraction, you put something out there, you have a, a you have a, a request, or you, you, you know what you intuitively want, and then it appears, you've got to jump on that. You've got to take it, and you have to trust that that's for you. And I think a lot of people don't um, feel worthy. They think, oh gosh. And they pass up all of these opportunities. Yeah. But when you are really, um, when you really love yourself, you want to give your, yourself the best. And it's easy to, to want it all for everyone else, and that's how I used to live my life. But in the last couple of years, I finally, I finally woken up and said, I deserve, I deserve what I want. And, um, and it's okay, that doesn't make me a selfish person. Into it, we are all selfish. But that's what we're supposed to be. Because when you are loving and giving to yourself, then you are going to be a better person for the people that you are helping. And I think when you take a look at the, uh, the whole role model situation, uh, if, if you have to put in words what your purpose is, I think that slogan that we talked about earlier is, um, is probably what the purpose of your life is, regardless of all these other things that you're doing, is inspiring people and having people look at you and say, because of you, I didn't give up. If, if you go through and, and you kind of accept all the opportunities come up, and if someone says, how would you like to, to climb this other mountain? And you say, you know what, that's an opportunity. Sure, let's do it. Mm. Then it's, it's is, is there any purpose to climbing that mountain other than, no, it's there, and it's an opportunity, yeah. and I may regret not doing it mm. later on, so I, I don't want to regret not doing things. Yeah. And, and if doing it, doing that inspires other people, then one of, the, one of your responsibilities is to share your stories. Because if you don't share your stories, you're not going to be able to inspire anybody. And that's what I've really struggled with. You know, I, I, um, I, stopped, I stopped public speaking in around 2002. And I, because I felt, I mean, most of my public speaking was about surviving cancer. And it had been 20 years, and um, I, I felt like I wasn't, I should stop sharing my story and just get over it, because there were people in my life who told me just that, you know, oh, you know, they'd roll their eyes and go, God, when are you just going to get over that? And I wasn't playing the victim, um, but that's how I felt people, it came across, you know, oh, poor Tracy, just get over it. And so I did. I stopped talking about it. And when I moved to New Zealand, I um, I had contacted a few uh, organizations and, and offered my services as a public speaker voluntarily. And they didn't really, they weren't that interested. So I saw that as a sign to just, maybe it is time for me to stop sharing my story. But the more, now that I'm sort of back on, on the speaking circuit, um, it has made me, I needed the break. I needed that break to, um, to figure out who I am, at, not as Tracy the cancer survivor, but as Tracy the humanitarian, Tracy the philanthropist, Tracy the entrepreneur, and I, and it has strengthened me, um, and made me see that I am actually way more than just a cancer survivor. I have this ability to manifest good things in my life. And so that is now a bigger part of my story than just Tracy Pepper, cancer survivor. 
Yeah, and, and this whole thing about because of you, I didn't give up. Just think of what the world is like today. Uh, I mean, we're, we're facing so many challenges in our, our, our youth, our, whether you're young or whether you're old. I mean, the tendency is it, it's overwhelming. The, the odds are overwhelming. Um, the, the, the fast pace, the disconnect we have with people. Um, I, I know it's only recently people have, you know, you know, ask me what I do for a living and or what I do, and, and I say, well, I don't know. Uh, I just recently became a licensed mortgage agent. I'm thinking I'm 64 years old and I'm starting another career <laughs> with my son's business, and I'm running for council, um, and I have a, a marketing business. like. So it's like, what do I do? I, I don't know what I want to do, but, but everything that I do, and I, and I look back, everything that I've done has helped other people achieve their goals. And so I thought, okay, I'll look at this. Mm -hmm. If your purpose is to inspire people so they don't give up, mm -hmm. if my purpose is to help other people achieve their goals, and that's what my purpose is, whether it's being a counselor, whether it's being a mortgage agent, whether it's being a... Um, a marketing consultant. I'm a school board trustee now. Right now. If, if if all of that is helping people achieve my goals, then what I'm doing is actually what I actually did when I started out a career as teaching. That's right. And I haven't changed from that. That's who I am. Mm. And so when you take a look at, at Tracy Pepper and, and you take a look at all of the other Tracy Peppers in the world who are doing things. And if, and if you ask them, why are you doing this, it basically is well, because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. Their their purpose is, is in there. Yeah. It's I'm not, I'm not doing it to, I'm not doing it for the money. I, I, I never have. I can live very frugally. I'm doing it for the, it, it has to have a bit of a selfish, I mean, I, I get so much out of giving. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel it lights my flame, and it yeah. makes that flame even brighter. And then I have more to give. Yeah. So yeah, your 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 motivation shouldn't be anything um, outside of yourself. Yeah. I, I saw um, as we were going through my uh, my aunt who just passed away recently with Alzheimer's in, in a, a nursing home, the Elizabeth Center. There was a lady in the opposite uh, room who had been in bed for about three years, hadn't got out of bed for three years, basically couldn't speak. It was, she was being taken care of. And, and we were talking to one of the nurses uh, one night, and, and uh, all the nurses talked about how they just loved looking after her. And I said, well, you know, there are going to be people who look at that lady and say, what's the purpose? Why is she even alive? And I said, really, she's alive to make all of the nurses feel so good yeah, about what they're doing. Yeah. And, and it's, her purpose was to give purpose and meaning to everybody else's life around them. And I said, what better purpose? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got tingles, that just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. And we can see this in, in so many different places in life. We can see so many people doing these things and it's like, you know, what's the purpose of this person who's so challenged that they, they can't speak, they can't walk. Mm -hmm. Well, look at the people around them. That's and right. if that person is giving purpose to their life, then that's the purpose. That's right. That's right. When when I um, volunteer with, with young children who have cancer and they and they pass away, you know, um, people do focus on the on the negative aspects of their life and that's so so tragic and it and it is. But I believe that um, you know, no life is, is a mistake. Nothing is um, worthless. That child has a purpose. And, and yeah. you know, when I look back also to my own experience, I think that this is really hard for me to say, but if I had died, my... my I love my family dearly, but at the time, everybody was so wrapped up in their own stuff that it was a very selfish home that I grew up in. If I had died, my life probably would have been wasted. 
because they I don't think that they would have gotten the message. Sadly, you know, my mom um, lived a bit of an, in a victim mentality, and um, if I had passed away, I don't think that she would have ever fully recovered. I mean, she hasn't really fully recovered, even though I survived it. She still is, though, you know, the, she still has the daughter that had, she still introduces me as the daughter with, who had cancer, 30 years later. But it gives her, um, oh, you poor thing. And people, people have to get out of that mentality. You have to look for the good in what's yeah. happening in your life. There, there's always the worst things that happen to you are guaranteed to make you a stronger person if you let it. Yeah. All of the good in your life today is generally the result of something bad that's happened to you. Yep. Definitely. You need hardships in order to get through life. It's tough. That's right. So you're just going to go on taking advantage of opportunities that come up and just... That's how I live. I don't have a 10-year plan. I don't have a 5-year plan. I don't even... I can't even think, you know, beyond six months. But you are going to be true to yourself. Yeah. You're going to do what what feels right. I follow the crumbs. Yeah. So when you land in New Zealand, you felt connected. Yeah. So if there's four opportunities in front of you, one or two of them are going to feel right. Yeah. The others may not. That's right. So I go with what feels right. Yeah. And I just. And that's how trust you live your purpose. Yeah. So now, you know, people are asking me what's next. You ask me what's next. I have no idea. I'm going to Tanzania. Okay. And I feel that's when I was there last year. I felt that same excitement and knowing that I felt when I first went to New Zealand. I don't know what it means. Tanzania is, was not on my radar at all. I mean, climbing Kilimanjaro was not on my bucket list. How long are you gonna stay in Tanzania? This time I'll be there for three months. Three months. Yeah, so I'll be there until, um, from September until the end of November. And I don't even know what to expect. I mean, this is Africa. I have a plan, I'm going over to, to support and help a charity and an organization there. But, um, you know, it could change when I get there. They want me to teach life skills and um, they want me to um, teach massage and just basically educate, give some education to the community. They want, um, you know, to help the porters in particular who um, in the off season there's a real problem with alcoholism and um, of course the AIDS is, is, a, is an epidemic in everywhere in Africa. So there's a lot of orphans, and um, so education is the key. So I've never really taught um, anything like this, but I have the experience, not necessarily with the AIDS, but you know, I've got the survival experience. It's the inspirational experience. Mm. So somehow I will find the words and the, um, uh, the inspiration will be provided, and I will be able to Go help with. these people. Go with the floor. Whatever way I can. Go with the floor. That's right. And you're going to share all this stuff. Yeah, I will. I'll be posting most of it on <laughs> Facebook, so uh, on my on my page, one mountain at a time. Um, and I am writing a blog, but I'm a bit behind in the blog because I've been so busy. But my purpose is, I mean, my plan is to write a book. And I really thought that climbing Kilimanjaro last year would be the perfect ending to the book, but it's just. It maybe is, is the ending of a, of a, of a, ch- a big chapter. I don't think there is an ending. I know, I think I just need to keep writing small yeah, books and just keep putting them out there. Uh, uh, so I've got to find the time to do that. Yeah. The book is just continuous. Okay. Tracy, it's been great. I, I'm really glad you were able to uh, stop in. Uh, I, this, this whole uh, discussion uh, is as philosophical as it is uh, about your your mission and, and raising awareness about the uh, uh, you know the, the, the cancer in the book and collecting clothes and I think it's just part of that that goal of yours and part of that mission to inspire others that, you know hey don't give up just just go with the flow and, and be yourself be true to yourself So Tracy Pepper, um, we will have the video of this interview on 
on YouTube, so it can be accessed from anywhere. And uh, uh, I'm sure that you'll probably use it on your uh, on your own websites. I definitely and, and will. Next time you are in Canada, we'll try to do this again. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, and I, great. If I could just also mention about the book. Yes, absolutely. I did forget to mention that um, as a contributor to the book, I'm I am promoting it across Canada. Um, every book that's sold buys a textbook for a child in Africa, so it's an amazing purpose and cause, um, and I'm really proud to be part of it. Um, you know, schools in Tanzania, there's only one textbook in the whole classroom, and that has to be shared with over 100 children, crammed into four to a desk, and those kids are so eager to learn. And um, they, you know, the whole um, premise behind this particular project is that everyone deserves the right to an education and I believe that it's education is the key to everything great one mountain at a time that that's the easiest way to get over you on Facebook so right yes one mountain at a time yeah thank you Tracy um, you're listening to the learning clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM and we will be back uh, in about 10 minutes Awesome. Thank you. I have to really go to the toilet. <laughs> I'm busting. <laughs>